Good morning and welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. I'm the Reverend Mandy Beal. I'm this congregation's senior minister. I'm joined in leadership of our service this morning by our co-directors of music ministry, Abha and Stephen Deering, our religious education coordinator, Vico, Nico Van Ostrand, as well as the Mangrel Carr family and Jacob Body. We have an all ages service today, so we'll see people of a lot of different ages leading different parts of the service. We also have technical support from our communications coordinator, Sarah Constantakis, and our Zoom greeter, Jane O'Neill. BUC is a spiritual home for all people of goodwill. We are a congregation of many beliefs, many backgrounds and identities. Our social justice work this year is focused on four areas, that is racial justice, environmental justice, economic inequality, and civic engagement. We are a Green Sanctuary Congregation, which is about our commitment to the planet, and a welcoming congregation, which is about our commitment to LGBTQIA inclusion. More information about those designations can be found on our website. Our services are hosted on Zoom every Sunday morning at 1030 and then later posted on Facebook. After the service today, we invite you to stay for virtual coffee hour. If you're worshiping with us for the first time today, we extend a special welcome to you and hope that you'll stay after the service and get to know us. We have three announcements this morning. The first is from SOS. Instead of hosting guests from South Oakland Shelter this year, BUC and other fellow congregations are raising funds to provide meals during the first week of November. Our goal is to raise $7,000. Donations in any amount are gratefully welcome. To contribute, please visit BUC's website or send a check with SOS in the memo line to our office. Deadline for contributions is the 25th. Second, join the humanists of BUC this evening at 7 p.m. with their featured speaker, Reverend Suzanne Paul. Uh, Reverend Suzanne is the past president of the American Humanist Association and a retired UU minister. Her topic will be balancing head and heart followed by an open discussion period. A link to that Zoom meeting is on BUC's meeting calendar. Third, the membership committee welcomes everyone to the first session of getting to know UU starting today after the service. In these four non-sequential classes, you will learn more about BUC and how it can serve as your spiritual home. This is an interactive, introspective, and fun experience for anyone who wants to explore Unitarian Universalism and know more about other BUCers. The classes are co-led by Brianna Zamborski and Rob Davidson. Today's session will begin promptly at noon using a different Zoom link than the one that you use to join the service. That link is also on BUC's meeting calendar. And just a heads up, that means that coffee hour will end at 11.45 today so we can start the class. Again, this says promptly at noon. Thank you again for joining us this morning or whenever you are watching this. Although we are not together physically, we are together in spirit and it is good to be together again. With that, our service will begin. This morning's prelude is an arrangement of a Celtic folk song, uh, also popular in Eastern Canada. And it's by Claude Gagnon, played on classical guitar. <laughs> worship in our separate homes this morning, but we are joined by a multitude of Unitarian Universalists enlightening our chalice. Now we have Chalice Lighting Words by Andrew Pacula. Let there be light, the light of joy, the light of happiness, and the light of contentment. May it, may it illuminate our paths and fill our lives with peace. And let there be dark, 
For it is from our dark places that we are brought forward, tried and tested and impelled toward growth. It is in these places that we realize compassion and learn to love. And there was a day and there was a night and there was joy and there was sorrow and it was good. Thus end my reading. everybody please join in and sing it fully and strong feel free to stand up and join in marching and singing and dancing it is originally zulu hymn but this is sia hamba which we're going to sing in english let's see some bodies moving big strong voices here we go and we are marching in the light of god we are marching in the light of to a time of joy and wonder. Our church is a home for big questions and exploring who we are. We honor the questions and the many paths by which we travel. We are a community of learners, all of us seeking and finding new answers throughout our lives. Let us never be satisfied, but stay open and curious. This is a laboratory of values. We find new parts of ourselves here in each other's company and we are made better by our interactions. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to create a life, uh, to create a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. And I don't know about you, but watching Karina Mangrel car dance is my new favorite thing. Talk about a source of joy. This is the work to which we give our time, our talent, and our treasure. So let there be an offering of support for this beloved community and our good works. Contributions can be made through our website and through Venmo, username at BUCMI, or you can send a check in the mail. In an act of love and support for our congregation, I invite you to please give generously. The song for this morning's offertory is called Try a Little Kindness. And you may have heard this on a popular show, Sesame Street. The lyrics are by Molly Boylan and Stephen Deering. And the music is by J.P. Rende and Catherine Rao Rende. This is Try a Little Kindness. Feel free to join in on That's Kindness anytime. There's a word I know when it starts with K. That word is kindness, hear me when I say K is for kindness, a simple word, it's true 
It's amazing what a word can do, can do. Amazing what a word can do. When you help someone in need, that's kindness. Now you plant a little seed. That's kindness. When you give a pal a hug, that's kindness. Gently hold a ladybug, that's kindness too. Now when you try a little kindness, kindness. When you help someone for real, you might be surprised to realize how good it makes you feel. Without it, sometimes we feel the blues. K is for kindness, a simple word, it's true. It's amazing what a word can do, can do. Amazing what a word can do. When you listen and stay calm, That's make a cookie for your mom. That's when you scratch your puppy's ear, That's help to wipe away a tear. That's kindness, too. We come to the part in our service that we have set aside for spiritual reflection, centering, and prayer. We begin with a sharing of joys and sorrows from our community, prayers of the people. We have a, a joy from Cheryl Shuttle. Cheryl says that Jim is maintaining his positive spirits as he begins the long healing process following surgery for a knee that he fractured in the recent fall. We also have a joy from Carol Jackson and Alex Sellis. Carol says that on October 17th, 1981, when I lived in New York City, I met Alex at a friend's party in Rhode Island. That night and into the next morning, we had a six hour conversation that has been going on for 39 years, including our wedding on October 6th, 1984. Carol continues in these past 39 years that they have lived in 10 states, they've had three kids and a plethora of mammals and an unusual and the usual assortment of joys and sorrows, happily more joys. Their relationship has been supported by family, friends, and society, and is with a deep joy that this kind of open-hearted support is now available to all. Conti uh, continues, upon the occasion of our wedding anniversary, we want to thank this congregation, the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Monmouth County, which is in New Jersey, where we were married, and the UUA for their roles in making marriage a change, a life-affirming change that is possible for everyone. And finally, we have a joy from Kelly Taylor. Kelly says, this week I finally moved back into my house after being homeless for four weeks while black mold was removed from her home. It feels good to be back in her own, own house, Kelly says. I invite you now to move with me further into a spirit of prayer, reflection, centering. This morning, as we center and think about what it is to be kind, we come with gratitude for this community, for the kindness and the warmth and the love that we felt here. This is a safe harbor for all of us. It's the kindness that we felt here that gives us the strength to go back into a world that some, can sometimes be a little bit less than kind. Let us take the kindness that we find here, magnify it further in our hearts and offer it to that world that needs it so much. May it be so, amen and blessed be. Oh, 
I share stories for all ages, I like to remind everyone that for all ages means just that, a story for you to receive and enjoy or interpret or judge or whatever in the context of your own life at whatever age. Humans process life through story. And as I share this one, I invite you to notice how this narrative and its lessons connect with your life and with the world around us. This morning's story is The Angry Ladybug and the Very Polite Spider by Sarah Scotchko. Bugsburg was for everybody. There were caterpillars and ants and beetles. There were moths and flies and ladybugs and everyone lived in harmony together. That is until one day when Ant said, have you all noticed that a lot of bugs have gone missing? The angry ladybug replied, oh yeah, didn't you know? It's that suspiciously polite spider that just moved in. I beg your pardon, said the spider, who was at that moment chewing on an ant leg. How dare you, said the spider. How dare you accuse me with no proof? I have been nothing but kind to the residents of Bugsburg. Have I ever even raised my voice at any of you? Well, no, said the caterpillar, you haven't raised your voice. Yeah, but you have been eating people, said the angry ladybug. The spider looked shocked. And with his back legs, he pushed all the bug leftovers from his lunch behind his web where no one could see. I can't believe I'm being treated this way, said the suspiciously polite spider. And Bugsburg, of all places, I would have expected better from all of you. Is this really who you want to be? I know I don't want to be eaten, said the angry ladybug. You are unbelievably rude, said the spider. The ladybug stamped three of her feet on one side and said, me, rude, I am being honest. This is just low, said the spider. And he crawled back to his web, sadly. The next day in the town square in Bugsburg, there was a poster. Debate at noon, ladybug versus spider. When the ladybug saw this, she was shocked. She ran straight to the spider's web and said, debate, I didn't agree to any debate. Wow, said the polite spider. So you accuse me in public of eating bugs, something heinous, something no spider would do. I'm pretty sure that's what spiders do, said the ladybug. I digress, said the spider. You accuse me in public, and then refused to meet for a reasonable, logical debate in front of everyone in the marketplace of ideas. I don't want to get eaten, said the ladybug. Have I ever eaten you, said the spider. I I'm sorry, are you picking your teeth with a beetle shell right now, the ladybug said. You have no proof that this is a beetle shell, said the polite spider. Okay, fine, said the ladybug. What is it that we're debating? The fact that you keep eating bugs? I'm not sure that's up for debate, said the spider. Have we really established that at all? No, what we're debating today is this trend of ladybugs accusing spiders of things. We're going to get to the bottom of this, said the spider. I'm not sure I want to be in this debate, said the ladybug. Ah, said the spider to everyone who had assembled. So you see, the ladybug wants to level accusations at people and then not defend herself. Typical. Well, he does have a point, said one of the ants who was at that moment being eaten by the spider. This is ridiculous. You are mean, shouted the ladybug. You're yelling, said the spider. You've called me names. We can see who's in the right here. The ladybug stomped off. And so the bugs in Bugsburg kept right on disappearing until one day no one was left to question the suspiciously polite spider. And so the spider packed up his web and went on to another town. Do you have any references from Bugsburg? They said, before we let you move in, we'd like to know that everything went well. Well, said the spider, have you heard anything bad about me from the residents of Bugsburg? Well, no, said the chief ant in Antsville, and they let him move in. I wonder, who was in the right? The angry ladybug or the very polite spider? Thank you, Nico, for that beautiful, complex, and super important story. There's a lot 
going on in this story about an angry ladybug and a suspiciously polite spider. Now being polite is important, but what happens if someone uses politeness so they can get away with hurting others? There's a musical called Into the Woods by Stephen Sondheim. And one of the songs in that musical has the line, nice is different than good. And that's what today's story was all about. Nice is different than good. Now, Unitarian Universalists get confused about this a lot. You use promise to value the inherent worth and dignity of all people, or in this case, all bugs. And like the ant and the caterpillar in the story, most of you use want to believe what the spider said about not eating other bugs. We don't want to call the spider a liar because it seems rude but the spider was clearly eating other bugs. I've heard you you say that it is inappropriate for us to talk about someone's bad behavior because it is gossip or it is unkind. And our seven principles say that everyone has inherent worth and dignity. And it's true that our first principle calls us to respect the inherent worth and dignity of each person or bug, but that doesn't mean that we should pretend that nothing harmful is happening when it obviously is. Bad behavior has serious consequences for the people who are hurt and for everyone in the community. And when bad behavior goes unchecked, it leads to more bad behavior. If we keep giving the spider the benefit of the doubt, that only leads to more bugs being eaten. And in this case, all of the bugs were eaten. When we speak out against harmful behavior, it doesn't mean that we don't value the worth and dignity of the person in question. People have worth and dignity, behaviors do not. The ladybug knew that it was important for someone to stand up to the spider. The other bugs didn't wanna to listen to her because they thought that she was being rude to the spider. But it's actually more rude for the spider to eat bugs. If someone has been hurtful, it's important for us to say something about it. As you use, it is our job to protect people from harm, not to protect the people who cause harm. Now, who you tell and when you tell and how you tell about bad behavior is important, but honesty and accurately describing someone's behavior and how it made you feel is not unkind, it's just true. What was really confusing the bugs in our story was the difference in tone between the ladybug and the spider. The ladybug was loud and angry. She was not polite. She knew the spider was doing very harmful things. And she was scared that the spider was eventually going to eat all of them, including her, which he did. And she tried to tell everyone exactly what the spider was doing, but because she was angry, the spider made it sound like she was picking on him. It's okay for the ladybug to be angry about the damage caused by the spider. It's okay for her to use angry words in an angry tone when talking about him. Angry is not the same as mean. And on the other hand, the suspiciously polite spider used a more pleasant tone to deny that he was causing harm while he was literally eating other bugs. He acted like he had been attacked and as if he couldn't possibly have done anything wrong because he was being attacked. Someone who uses all of the right words in a, a nice tone can still do a lot of damage with their actions. Nice is different than good and actions are more impo important than words. We you use have covenants that guide our behavior. We have to be accountable to each other for staying within those covenants. All of us, are going to be out of covenant at some point. All of us will do something hurtful, probably not on purpose, and probably not as serious as eating other people. But having a conversation about how our behavior has impacted someone else is the first step to healing, to going back into our covenants. Even if it makes us uncomfortable, we have to be willing to talk about it and consider that we may have been wrong. Although it might be uncomfortable, Accountability is not punishment. There are people in our country and even in Unitarian Universalism who think that they can act however they want without regard to how it makes other people feel. 
And when their behavior is questioned, they say that it's okay for them to do whatever they want because of free speech or religious freedom. And that confuses things because we want people to have free speech and the freedom to practice their religion. After all, we don't want someone telling us what we can say and what religion we have to be. But when someone says that it's okay for them to use language that hurts others because of their right to free speech or their religious freedom, that's really just an excuse. The people who say those hurtful things have learned how to use important American values to justify their bad behavior. And they use the ideas of free speech, religious freedom, the, the marketplace of free exchange of ideas so that they can slip out of being held accountable for their actions. And over the years, the people who say those hurtful words have started using the term political correctness as a code for words that they think are silly. And sometimes people who say those hurtful things use that term political correctness to deflect criticism of their behavior. Sometimes they even say that others are trying to control them by asking them to use different, kinder words. And it's true that you use believe that no one should tell another person what to do, but there are consequences to our words and our actions. If we hurt someone, especially if we do it on purpose, we have broken our covenants. Using words that hurt other people on purpose is bad behavior. And just like the ladybug, it is our job to name bad behavior and to hold ourselves and each other accountable. Now, that doesn't mean that we're trying to control anybody. What I've always wondered is, why do some people think it's more important for them to be able to do and say whatever they want than it is for other people to feel valued? When someone thinks that they have the right to say whatever they want and it doesn't matter how people feel, what they're really saying is that they value their opinion over someone else's experience. They are saying that they don't have to care about anybody but themselves and other people like them. They're saying that their comfort is more important than someone else's pain. If we have to pick between the comfort of one person or the worth and dignity of another person, we really have to be on the side of the person who's being hurt. People say that words can't hurt you, but that's just not true. Words have power. And there's a lot of evidence that words can cause depression and even worse in marginalized groups. There is a big difference between the discomfort of accountability and the pain that is caused by hurtful speech. You use believe in treating people with dignity and with respect. We believe in kindness. And sometimes that means that we have to be uncomfortable and have conversations about falling short but it's our job to stick up for each other and for ourselves. Even when we're pretty sure that someone is nice, that doesn't mean that they are kind. Nice is different from good, and it's okay for us to get upset about bad behavior. That's part of being in covenant with one another, it's to help each other be better. So may that be so, amen and blessed be. You use believe that kindness and respect are really important values. And so be kind to yourself as you join in this last hymn. There's a river flowing in my soul. And we have Jacob Body joining us on interpretive movement in this hymn. There's a river. Oh, <laughs> 
I send you out into this world to be a voice of kindness, to shout the inherent worth and dignity of all, to hold each other in love and accountability. Go forth and do so with full knowledge that you are a beacon of love and kindness. May it be. Amen. <laughs>